uh, 20 kilometers in diameter, you know, bigger than Manhattan Island, uh, bigger, uh, twice as large as the rock that killed the dinosaurs right. 66 million years ago. So it's a giant object. Uh, For decades, humanity has stared into the stars, confident that we understood the rhythm of the universe, the dance of planets, the quiet drift of comets, the predictable pull of gravity. But sometimes, something appears that doesn't fit any pattern, something that forces science to stop, take a breath, and start over. Now, astronomers have detected something enormous, a body so vast it dwarfs every interstellar object ever seen. An object more than a hundred times larger than 3i Atlas, crossing into our solar system as if following a precise path. Its arrival raises one haunting question. Is this a coincidence or part of a sequence that's been unfolding for far longer than we realize? Because if this object isn't alone, then the universe isn't just knocking on our door, it's already here. It began quietly in September 2025, when NASA's Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO, detected something strange near the edge of its field of view. The spacecraft Swan Instrument, which measures hydrogen emissions from solar wind, registered a spike so intense it flooded the sensors. For a few brief minutes, the data became unreadable, overwhelmed by a flash of ultraviolet brightness thousands of times stronger than anything previously recorded. At first, the anomaly was dismissed as a data glitch. But when the readings repeated and other observatories confirmed them, astronomers realized something massive had entered the inner solar system. The object was cataloged as C2025ER2, nicknamed SWAN. Early estimates suggested it was a large comet, possibly an icy body from the Uit cloud. But as more instruments turned toward it, the story changed completely. Comets are messy things, chunks of ice and dust that vaporize near the sun, shedding tails and jets in chaotic bursts. Swan did none of that. Instead, it maintained a vast, perfectly symmetrical halo a plasma envelope stretching wider than five full moons across the sky. It wasn't chaotic, it was stable. And that stability shouldn't be possible in nature. Scientists measured the energy required to contain a field of that magnitude. The answer was staggering, equivalent to the total annual energy consumption of the United States. Yet this object maintained it effortlessly for days on end without any sign of heat loss or instability. It was as if something were managing it, adjusting and balancing the plasma flow in real time. A natural comet would have disintegrated under that pressure. Swan held firm, humming with precision. Spectrographic scans brought the next surprise. Instead of ice and dust, Swan's surface reflected light like polished metal. It contained nickel, cobalt and trace elements of iridium. Metals found in meteorites, yes, but not in such uniform concentration. The reflectivity curve showed none of the rough scattering seen in natural rock. This was smooth, almost machined. To achieve that purity, you would need industrial refinement, a process capable of melting and filtering metals at temperatures hotter than the sun's surface. No known geological event could create it. If Swan had formed naturally, its metals would be mixed with silicates and carbon compounds. But they were. It was as if someone had built it atom by atom. As observatories worldwide tracked Swan's movement, they noticed another impossible behavior. Its course wasn't purely ballistic. Tiny, deliberate corrections appeared subtle shifts in direction that aligned it perfectly with the ecliptic plane. Natural objects drift, they wobble, they respond to gravity and solar radiation pressure. Swan did none of that. Every adjustment seemed intentional, as if an onboard guidance system were keeping it steady. When the data was overlaid with past observations of 3i Atlas and Taumuamua, an unsettling pattern emerged. 
Each object had displayed increasingly complex control. Taumuamu accelerated slightly, without visible propulsion. 3i Atlas appeared to modulate its brightness and temperature. Now Swan, massive, metallic and stable, was executing controlled trajectory changes. If that's coincidence, it's the most precise sequence of coincidences in astronomical history. Calculations show that sustaining Swan's plasma envelope requires power exceeding 10,000 gigawatts, more than every power plant on Earth combined. Yet there's no visible exhaust, no radiation leakage, no thermal signature expected from that much energy output. Some physicists propose it could be harnessing magnetic confinement, essentially running fusion on a scale we've only dreamed of. Others whisper about vacuum energy extraction, drawing power directly from the quantum field. Whatever the mechanism, it's far beyond our reach. Its core temperature measures in the hundreds of millions of degrees, yet the exterior remains cool. That's not chaos, that's engineering. Someone or something built it to last. Then came the revelation that changed everything. Swan and 3i Atlas, approaching from entirely different trajectories, would reach their closest points to the sun within days of each other, in October 2025. The odds of that happening naturally, less than one in 10 billion. Even stranger, both objects will pass behind the sun at the same time, disappearing from every telescope on Earth for several days. During that window, we'll have no eyes on either of them. If they were to alter course, release something or communicate, we wouldn't see it happen. It feels less like coincidence and more like synchronization, as if two separate instruments were arriving for a single, shared purpose. Astronomers tracing Swan's orbit found that it's not a one-time visitor. Its long-period trajectory suggests it passed near the Sun roughly every 280-300 years. That means it last came through in the early 1700s, a period that coincided with sudden leaps in human invention, the age of electricity, the rise of precise navigation, and the early industrial revolution. Stretch the pattern further and deeper cycles align with transformative eras, the end of the Ice Age, the rise of agriculture, the birth of civilization. It could all be coincidence. But if Swan has visited before, its timing has always matched moments when humanity takes great leaps forward. Despite its massive size, Swan evaded detection until it was already inside the solar system. It approached from the direction of the sun, the one blind spot where even our most advanced observatories can't see. That maneuver would be a perfect way to hide from Earth-based detection. Did it choose that route, or was it luck? If deliberate, it means whoever, or whatever, controls Swan understands our observation methods. It knows where we're looking and where we are. Now every major space agency, NASA, ESA, JAXA, Roscosmos, is focused on one question. What happens when Swan and 3i Atlas emerge from behind the sun? Are they natural relics from deep space, linked by coincidence? Or are they part of something coordinated, a sequence of probes, each one larger, more advanced and closer to us than the last? Because if this pattern continues, the next arrival won't simply pass through. It will stop. Maybe Swan is a comet behaving in a way we don't yet understand, a fusion of chemistry and physics still beyond our models. Or maybe it's part of a design older than recorded history, a network of silent travelers moving from star to star, observing, measuring, and occasionally returning. Whatever it is, it reminds us that the cosmos doesn't operate on human timescales. It has its own rhythm, one that spans millennia, not decades. And sometimes, that rhythm feels like a countdown. We've entered an era where the mysteries of deep space are no longer distant. They're here, visible, trackable, and growing harder to explain. 
The next few months could redefine everything we think we know about life, intelligence, and the universe itself. The question isn't whether we're alone anymore. It's whether we're ready for what's coming next.